what was ailing me. Go ahead. Okay. And in the process of that, I became involved with all kinds of things mm -hmm. of this world, mm -hmm. which is sin. Yes. In Matthew, it advises us to have compassion for our fellow man as God has had mercy for us. Go ahead. Unforgiveness is a sin. Mm -hmm. Jesus died on the cross, and as they hung him on the cross, he said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Go ahead. But if somebody look at me the wrong way, I'm upset with them. But he took the nails in his hands, the piercing in his side, they whipped him, and he asked the Father to forgive them. Go ahead. In Ephesians, it says, put away bitterness, wrath, anger, and malice. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That comes from unforgiveness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Colossians talks about forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If a man have a quarrel against anyone, even as Christ forgave us, we should forgive them. Go ahead. There's two commandments that God commanded us to do. Given to us by God in Matthew, Jesus said, You shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and mind. This is the first great commandment. The second, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's right. Jesus gave us very important commandments to follow. One of them, love one another as he has loved us. John talks about love is the opposite of unforgiveness, envy, jealousy, hate, pride, and bitterness. You can truly love someone and hold bitterness or unforgiveness against them at the same time. Yep. And when I was reading that, it tell me, I'm going to use my husband, that sometimes we go through our thing and I say I forgive you, but the whole time I haven't forgave him go ahead. because I have learned how to smile and rock and go over it and bypass it, but it was still in there. Go ahead. So if I could be in his face smiling, everything's good today, but tomorrow I'm looking at him like I want to kill him. Go ahead. I never forgave him. Go ahead. Go ahead. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Matthew 6 says, if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father That's forgive right. you your trespasses. The Lord prayer says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against Go ahead. us. When they nailed Jesus to the cross, we know that he asked his father to forgive them. John talks about, tells us that if we abide in Christ, we will pro produce much spiritual fruit. And the way that we abide in Christ is by keeping his commandment. Verse 12 tells us that his commandment is to love one another as he has loved us. Verse 7 says, Again, if we abide in him, he will abide in us. And Romans says, don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by, te by testing you may discern what is the will of God. Thank Go you. ahead. <laughs> Which they need to be healed from. 
Then there is self-doubt that causes people not to move forward because they do not believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. Then there is doubt in the unknown, which many people have pertaining to God, and desires or ambitions and dreams they want to aspire. Aspire is to be eagerly, eagerly desirous, especially from something great of high value. Now, the opposite of doubt is faith. Faith is the confidence or trust in a person or thing. Also, it is belief that is not based on proof. Mm -hmm. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's right. Now, doubt. Doubt is to be uncertain or undecided, the tend to disbelieve or distrust, to regard as unlikely or obsolete fear. To be in such a state of fear, there is no use for you. <laughs> there are many examples that can be used pertaining to doubt. In the Bible, Jesus had the most trouble with his disciples because they stayed in a constant place of doubt, mm -hmm. battling on the inside whether what Jesus said they can do, they could do it if they were able to do it. Mm -hmm. But to do it means you first have to trust the person who says you are able to do so. That's right. Belief in God. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder That's of right. them that just diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in God, if God gave you a promise, you won't be able to fulfill it because you are not able to recognize the source that is telling you the things that he needs you to do. So therefore, every time that he gives you an order or a directive, if you don't follow it, you're not going to have any success. That's you're right. not going to have anything manifest in your life and you'll right. be in a, a, a state of being stuck. That's right. If God tells us to do something and we don't do it, we can either be in a state of rebellion or in a place of doubt. Mm -hmm. If he told you to move forward, and if you don't move forward because you're not sure that it's him talking to you, that means you're in a place of doubt. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the more that we are fasting and praying and the more that we stay in his word, we are able to be able to hear his, his spiritual voice speak to us in our spiritual mm -hmm. being. Self-doubt. Now, when Peter saw Jesus Christ walking on the water, he wanted to come out to him if he was really Lord, bid me to come unto you. So therefore, Jesus Christ told him to come to him. So, as Peter was walking to Jesus Christ, because he wanted to get to a place where he was, he was fine because he kept his focus on him. But as soon as he started seeing the waves and the different situations that was going on around him, then he got into a place of self-doubt and then he began, he became, he became, he started sinking. So when he started sinking, the, the, the self-doubt set in, so therefore he felt on his own he couldn't continue on even though Jesus Christ immediately reached out his hand to save him. But Jesus Christ wanted him to know that you could come to me, I'm here waiting for you. Amen, amen. And that was Matthew 14, 31. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hell of him, saying to him, Oh, you a little faith, why did you doubt? And who did Peter doubt? Peter doubted himself. That's right. Now, another form of doubt is fear. And we are disobedient and don't do that what God has told us to do. From the beginning, then we open the door for many different spirits. A, fear, a spirit of fear and a spirit of doubt. Mm -hmm. And Deuteronomy 28, 66. This is pertaining to disobedience and obedience. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have, shalt have none assurance of thy life. If you don't do what God said to do, and you continuously being rebellious or hard-headed, you put doubt and fear in your life, and you're not sure about anything that you do, because you have a double mind. Mm -hmm. And he will allow it to happen until you get into a place of repentance Amen. and you turn from your evil, wicked ways. Mm -hmm. Now, hopes and desires. We all have something that we are hoping for. We all have dreams. We all have goals. And at the time that you're waiting for it, if it doesn't happen at a certain time you want it to happen, then you begin to get anxious and then start being doubtful. Mm -hmm. But God said, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything yes. by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6-7. As long as we go to the Father in prayer and believe mm -hmm. and not doubt, that's then right. we will receive what we ask that's right. in His will. That's and right. we also will get the peace to help us to wait for what it is that that's we're right. for. Amen. And God knew that we all was going to be hoping for something. It says in Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. 